Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Make sure you buy 2000. And 20 edition. Today we'll solve some problem that you will find on page number 481. Turn to it, page number 481. Always make sure the book is in front of you. The very first problem on page 481, number 34, as you can see, it's already on the blackboard. Let's get going, shall we? Uh, at the end of the video, as I always tell you, if you at the end of the video, if you find it helpful, if you found it, if you find it useful, and you decide that you would like to work with me, you can always get hold of me by sending me an email at kashwaniprep at icloud.com Let's take a look at it. It says, in how many games did they score goals, this particular team that they're talking about, in how many games did they score goals which were equal to, which were equal to the median number of goals that they scored in the 29 games that they played. And this is, this is the information that is given to us. We are told that they scored one goal, so here here we have the goals that they scored, goals scored, and here in the y-axis we have the number of games. And they go on to tell us that they scored one goal in eight games, in eight games, one goal, we are told that they scored two goals in nine games. Then, they, then we are told that they scored three goals in six games. Three goals in six games, it doesn't have to be precise. This is six games. Then, they, then we are told that they scored four goals in three games. Four goals in three games. Five. Five goals in two games. five goals in two games. I should have done this thing ahead of time. They, they did not score six goals in any game at all and they scored seven goals. There was nothing here and they scored seven goals in just one game. All of this was not necessary because you have the book in front of you but if you were to add up all these numbers 1 plus 2, 6 plus 6 is 12, 12 plus 12 is uh, 6 6 plus 6 is 12, 12 plus 9 is 21, that's just 21, or 21 and 8, let's put this 8 here, 21 and 8 is 29 games. The total of 29 games were played, and the question is, in how many games is this score, which happen to be equal to the median number of goals? Well, there are 29 games, as we just said here, so we have 14 on this side, we have 14 on that side, there's 28 games, which means that the median here, we have 14 on this side, which means the median is the 15th game. That's going to be the median. Let's figure out where that is. We are looking for the 15th game. We start from here. That's the first 8 game. And then the next 9 game, 8 plus 9 is 17. There you go. That's already there. Median is right here. The median is 2. Median is 2. Now the question is very st straightforward. In how many games did they score 2? In how many, in how many games did they score two, which is their median? And the answer is in nine games, right there. Right there, they told us that they scored two goals in nine games. So the answer to this problem is nine. That's what we're going to grade in. There were nine games where they scored two goals. That's all. All you have to do is pay attention to the wording. That's all it is. This problem is not that difficult. It's straightforward. But sometimes the wording gets to the people, especially when they are in a hurry. They slow down, particularly towards the very end of the section. This is the very end of the section. We're getting, there are only 38 questions. We're getting into hard territory. And sometimes the hard problems are classified as hard, not necessarily because they involve complicated mathematics, as you can clearly see. This one does not. But because of the wording, because of how they are worded. You just have to slow down. Take your time. Number 35. 
and in some cases and in some cases it's just a matter of one word just one word in the question if you miss it or if you misread it you're done number 35 number 35 we are told that this particular lady she pays taxes and she's we are told that she owed taxes without deduction in the amount of 15,500 without deduction she owes the taxes in the amount of 15,500 but then they go on to tell us that with deduction with deduction she owes she owes $2,325 less and as a result if she takes a deduction she owes $2,325 less and that is reduction these these deduction that we're talking about these deduction we're told reduce our taxes by a D percent question simply is what is D how much is D let's find out shall we well it, they reduce the, this, this deduction we are told the deduction we are told reduce her taxes by D percent D percent of what D percent of what she would have ordinarily would have paid without the tax without the deduction ordinarily she would have paid 15,500 which means the question now is uh, D percent so what we have to solve here is so now we know that her her taxes go down by D percent D percent of what D percent of that so now we know the D percent of 15,500 equals 2,325 because that's how much the taxes go down by the amount of taxes that she owes goes down by $2,325 which happens to represent D percent of the, of the amount that she would have ordinarily paid without it had she not taken the deduction let's solve this equation shall we that's it we're done with all of this thing you already have it let's do it on the top so let's keep going shall we D, D percent D percent means over 100 off means times 15,500 I just changed the marker and this one is no, no good either 2,325 let me change this thing I hate it when they start when they start to go down uh, when they start to die that's it let's, let's pick up the speed here so let's so solve for it so D would equal bring the 100 over there and 15,500 down here that's all 2325 times 100 from here over 15,500. Let's divide top and bottom by 100 so it goes down and we can clearly see they're both multiple of 5. So the to the 5. Let's multiply top and bottom by 5, shall we? 15 has 3 fives and 5 has 1 five, so that's 31. How many fives does 2 have? 2 has no 5s, 2 has 0 5s. What happens to the 2? Two? 2 goes and joins the 3 and becomes 23. And 23 has 23 has 4 5. 4 5s are 20. After we take away 20 from the 23, we have a remainder of 3. What happens to the 3? That 3 goes and joins the 2 and becomes a 32. And 32 has 8 5s. 8 5s are 8 5s are oh, 8 5s are 40. That's not good. 32 has 6 5. 6 5s are 30. 6, 5, or 30. This is what, in case the language sometimes gets to you, this is what I'm saying. 6, 5s are 30. That's the lingo. 6, 5s are 30. 8, 5s are 40. So after we take away, we have, so let's start again. 23 has 4, 5, 4, 5s are 20, 4, 5s are 20. After we take away 20 from 23, we have a remainder of 3. 3 goes and joins the 2, becomes a 32. 32 has 6, 5, 6, 5s are 30. After we take away 30 from 32, we have a remainder of 2. 2 goes and joins the 5 and becomes a 25. And five, 25 is 5. Now what will we do next? What do we do next? Well obviously not much because 31 is a prime number. So we can't obviously reduce anymore. So there is no point in looking at the top as to what is the factor of 31 is a prime number. Now we can clearly see that 31 times, listen carefully okay. We can, we can clearly see that 31 times 10 is 310. 310 and this number is clearly, <coughs> clearly more than 310. Which means the 600 is, which means 465 give me a second which means 
465 must be either 11 times 31 or 12 times 31 or 13 times 30, 31, something like that. It is actually 15 times 31. And how do I know that? How do we know that just by looking at it? It's very simple. It's very simple. Had it been, had it been 31 times 11, 31 times 11, whatever the quantity is, 1 times 1 is 1. The unit digit of the result would have been 1. Had it been 31 times 12, see we are, we are lucky here because we are dealing with 31 which has a unit digit of 1, so it's very easy to multiply. The product of 31 and 12 would end in a 2. Product of 31 and 31 and 13 will end in a 3. Since this ends in a 5, that tells me that it's a, it's a 15. And we can actually verify it very quickly. So let's do it together. 15 times 1 is 15. Carry 10. Uh, okay, carry 1 rather. Again, one, one more time. You're dividing by, multiplying by 15. 15 times 1 is 15. 5, carry 1. And 15 times 3 is 45. 45 plus 1 is 46. Voila. So let's divide top and bottom by, by 31 and you get 15. The answer is B equals 15. That's our answer. D equals 15. Let's do the next one. Number 36. Number 36. It says that the system of equation, system of equations has no solutions. Before we even write down the equations, we know what that means. If they have no solutions, that means that that implies that the lines, the system of equations that we are about to see, which are two equations there, which represent two lines, two because they are linear equations, lines must be parallel. Parallel line with different intercepts, uh, and they will have no solutions because they will never they will never intersect. And here here are the equations. 3 quarter x minus 1 half y equals 12 and the other one is x minus by equals 9 so all we have to do is oh I never told you what the question was well the question is how much is a over b that's the question so all we have to do is write this equation in a slope intercept form which is y equals to mx plus b and once we, once we have written both of these equations in slope intercept form this is the slope we get the slope from this equation, we get the slope from this equation equate the two quantities because they are parallel they have equal slopes equate the two quantities and solve for a over b that's all it is let's do it, shall we? let's do it together shall we? so let's bring this half y to that side and bring the 12 to this side bring half y to that side and bring 12 to this side and we'll end up with 1 half y equals 3 quarter x minus 12 okay. I, was sl I slowed down to see if it's minus or 12 but in reality I would not have slowed down because it doesn't really matter we don't really care about what this quantity is we're looking for the slope as long as I pay attention to the slope that's what we're interested in even had I written down the wrong sign here positive 12 instead of negative 12 it wouldn't have done anything ordinarily in the real exam if I were doing this problem I wouldn't I wouldn't spend my split one quarter of a second worrying about that it's a slope I'm interested in let's multiply everything by 2 if you multiply everything by 2 this will become 3 quarter times 2 x minus 6 oh we're multiplying by 2 again see it doesn't matter it doesn't matter. It makes no difference. We don't really care about that guy. So that's it. So it looks like it's three halves. It's three over two. The slope is, slope of the first equation is three over two. Let's see what we get over there. Again the same thing. We're going to solve for y. We're going to solve for y. So let's bring by over there and bring the nine over here. Which means b times y would equal ax plus nine. Divide everything by b. So y would equal a over b times x plus 9 over b. Oh, there you go. There's the slope of this guy. There's the slope of this guy. Oh, there you go. We're done. The question was, how much is a over b? a over b is 3 halves. a over b is 3 halves. That's it. 3 over 2. 
there are two more problems left on the next page which we'll do tomorrow in the next next video so I'll see you tomorrow and we'll do number 37 and 38 okay if you wish to get hold of me as I, as I, as I always tell you in the video in every video all you have to do is send me an email at keshwaniprep at icloud.com all right bye now